Here we are in southern Rafiach, southern Gaza, Rafiach. Um, you can see the battles have been intense here. You can see the bullet holes. The enemy is literally coming out of tunnels nearby. We're not too far away from where the hostages were executed, murdered in cold blood. I'm actually here with someone else who speaks English, uh, a, a fighter, a soldier in an elite unit. I'm not going to say what unit. Uh, I want to ask him a quick question. I know we're right now literally uh, defending the perimeter right now. Um, so what would cause you to, to uh, come here? I mean, you, you have... You don't have to fight here. You have also citizenship, right, of, of other, other country. Why would you risk your life here in the midst of all this? Well, I'm looking for the short answer. I don't know if there is one, but, uh, you know, geography was never the thing, you know. I'm right. Israeli. I was born here, and I, uh, I'll always be Israeli, and for me, it's, uh, it's a given. I mean, you didn't even, uh, I didn't even have a second the love of country, your country's in danger, your family's in danger, and you stepped in, stood in the gap? Absolutely. I mean, it, it, it's just, you know, once October hit, uh, I felt right away. I mean, this event belongs to me, just like any other Israeli. And, uh, right. Just didn't feel right to experience from the other side of the world. So, uh, me being here is the most natural thing for me to, like, I don't know, it just felt... Yeah. The work we do as a charity, we help immigrants uh, or people around the world donate to help immigrants. We just we're that uh, the one that gets to do the helping. Now, here's what I noticed is a lot of immigrants have have uh, it's hard for them to come to a foreign country to come to a place. Now, you uh, came because of your you were born here. But now, do you know that do you know any immigrants and their their struggle and the, the struggles they go through being, you know, suddenly in this kind of position in this kind of life? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, you can uh, you get to see all uh, all different kinds. Um, you know, the thing is, I think foreigners will never be able to understand what we right. and I talk to a lot of people in uh, uh, North America, the country I come from, right. and uh, it's just uh, it's a different frequency. Yeah, it's pretty hard to explain and. Uh, Sometimes just an encouraging word and some of the equipment that's needed with our emergency aid initiative. We have some equipment that we can deliver. Okay, and we're going to continue to help Israel in her time of need. Thank you for standing on the right side of history. Thank you for standing with Israel. God bless you. Goal is to thwart imminent attacks planned by Hezbollah, who intended to fire the very weapons that we destroyed at Israeli homes. Our goal is to make sure that Israeli families can safely and securely return to their homes. Where was Hezbollah hiding these weapons? Inside Lebanese homes. For the last 20 years, Hezbollah built its terror network within population centers in Lebanon, primarily throughout southern Lebanon, an area that they turned almost entirely into a launch pad to attack Israel. According to Israeli intelligence, it is estimated that in every two to three homes in southern Lebanon, there's a Hezbollah terror asset hidden inside. The IDF has released concrete intelligence documenting Hezbollah's human shield strategy. Here are a few examples of hundreds of targets. A long-range cruise missile with a 1,000 kilogram warhead that Hezbollah planned to launch at Israel, hidden in the attic of a Lebanese home. This is real footage from one such home. The DR-3 cruise missile with a warhead of up to 300 kilograms that Hezbollah intended to use to kill Israelis hidden inside a residential building in Lebanon. This is real footage from one such building. You can see the secondary explosions proving that we did target, and indeed hit, weapons inside those homes. On October 8th, Hezbollah started attacking Israel. They chose to join the war that Hamas started on October 7th with their brutal massacre. Since October 8th, 60,000 Israeli people evacuated their homes, and Hezbollah has indiscriminately fired over 9,000 rockets at Israeli homes, causing death and destruction. One of these attacks killed 12 kids playing soccer on a Saturday night in Majd al-Shams. After almost a year of Hezbollah rockets, missiles, suicide drones, and ground attacks, after almost a year of Israel calling and seeking a diplomatic solution, after almost a year of restraint from Israel, our defensive operation against Hezbollah sends a clear message. Enough is enough. Prior to our strikes on the Hezbollah weapons that they intended to launch at Israeli homes, we called on the Lebanese people with weapons in their homes to move out of danger, move out of harm's way. We conveyed this message in Arabic on TV and social media. 
we sent text messages and made phone calls. Israel is basically telegraphing its punches to its enemy so that it can minimize civilian harm. Hezbollah, however, seeks to maximize harm to the Lebanese civilians that it uses as human shields. Hezbollah called on Lebanese civilians to stay put, don't evacuate. While Hezbollah targets civilians, Israel is solely striking Hezbollah terrorist and military targets. We do this in full compliance with international law. Israel is a democratic state under threat from a terror organization whose stated goal is to destroy Israel. Hezbollah has openly declared that it has a plan to carry out its own October the 7th massacre on Israel's northern border, but on an even larger scale. They call this plan Conquer the Galilee. For years, Hezbollah has been planning to do in northern Israel what Hamas did in southern Israel on October 7th. Invade Israel, infiltrate civilian communities, and massacre innocent civilians. When the world came together and said that October the 7th can never happen again, the defensive action that Israel has been taking against Hezbollah fulfills that promise. Hezbollah planned to launch their October the 7th attack from the villages that they've been building their forces in for the last two decades. These villages, which are just across the border from Israel, have become bases of attacks. Just like this village, Kfalkile, which is located 350 meters from the Israeli community of Matula. Here you can see a Hezbollah weapons warehouse that they intentionally placed 100 meters from this school here and 125 meters from this mosque here. And this Lebanese village, Aita Ashab, which is approximately a kilometer away from the border with Israel. Hezbollah intentionally built two weapons warehouses in the heart of the civilian population here. 100 meters away, a mosque. 150 meters away, a medical clinic. 200 meters away, a Lebanese school. For the past two decades, Hezbollah has consistently and relentlessly deepened its presence in southern Lebanon, building outposts along the Blue Line, hiding massive amounts of arms in the villages of southern Lebanon in clear violation of UN Security Council Resolution 1701. We have a duty to make sure that Israeli civilians can return safely and securely back to their homes. We have a duty to make sure that October the 7th never happens again on any one of our borders.